Hello and welcome. Please pause the video and read the problem. Give it a shot. See what you can do. Okay, so here we've got, you know, we're ordering these numbers from smallest to largest, and it looks a little scary because we've got these negative numbers, negative exponents. Oh my gosh, what do we do? Well, fallback strategy, when it's available, um, and the exponents aren't too crazy, is to just write these things out in standard form, and then we'll talk about shortcuts after that. So first of all, let's write them out in standard form. We've got negative 3 times 10 to the negative 4th. So this means we've got a negative number. Okay. If we think about it starting at 3, and then we divide by 10 four times. So our decimal moves to the left four times from 3 all the way over here. And we have point negative, of course, point zero 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 three. And then we have negative 3.1 times 10 to the negative 3rd. Same idea. Um, here, we start at 3.1 and we divide by 10 three times. Decimal starting between 3 and 1. It's going to hop over here. Three spaces, which means we're going to have, of course, two zeros. Line that up correctly. This is a negative number as well. We have two zeros this time because we started between 3 and 1. Three divisions of 10. It's negative 3 here. 1, 2, 3. If you count those spaces, it'll give you two zeros. Finally, negative 9 times 10 to the negative second. Okay, well, we've got a negative number starting at 9. We divide twice, so boop, boop, over twice. We get uh, negative point zero nine. Okay, so with negative numbers, how do we compare these three? Which one's the largest, which one's the, the smallest? Um, well, the further you are from zero, the smaller the number. What do I mean? To compare these numbers, I think it's best to look at their absolute value. Uh, the larger the absolute value, the smaller the number. What does that mean? Well, remember that absolute value is distance, right? Absolute value, that's your distance from zero. How far is a number from zero? And that's always going to be positive, right? Think if you have the absolute value, for example, of negative two. Well, if we have a number line, here's zero, negative one, negative two. How far is this distance right here? Right? That is absolute value, and that's two units. So the absolute value of negative 2, of course, is 2. That's the distance that negative 2 is from 0. So if we look at the absolute value of each of these numbers, say the absolute value of negative 0 0.0003, if we look at the absolute value of the next number, negative 0 0.0031, and finally, the absolute value of negative 0 0.09, all we're going to get is three positive numbers. We're going to get 0 0.09, point zero zero three one and then finally point zero 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 three alright so here the larger the absolute value the smaller the number why well point zero nine has the largest absolute value so that's the smallest let's just establish that and then point zero zero three one is kind of in the middle here second largest number so that's in the middle and in fact, this number, 0 0.0003, is the largest. Now this is really confusing, right? Because you've got smallest absolute value gives you the largest number, and the largest absolute value gives you the smallest number. What's going on here? Well, this is the world of negative numbers. And sometimes uh, we have to remember that the negative world numbers reflects the positive numbers. What do I mean? Well, let's just look at a simple case. Let's say we have 0 in the middle and friendly decimals. Let's say we have 0.25 or fourth and 0 0.5 and 0 0.75. These are friendly, right? And then on the opposite side, the reflection here, we have negative 0.25, negative 0.5, and negative 0.75. And what you should notice, of course, is that on the positive numbers, everything's great, right? If this small distance it represents 0.25, it's the smallest number. So the smallest absolute value is smallest. Then we have in the middle, the middle absolute value, and the largest absolute value is the largest number. But lo and behold, on the negative, with the negative numbers, the opposite happens. The smallest absolute value goes you, gives you negative 0.25. It's the largest number with the smallest absolute value. When we say largest number, we mean the most positive, right? And it is. It's the closest to zero. Then the further from zero we get with negative numbers, the smaller the number gets. So the exact opposite is true. So it's important to remember that when you're dealing with cases like this, you might think in terms of positive numbers and then just flip everything you know. 
and then I'll give you um, a little bit more to think about. So let's just write this down so we have something written. Our smallest number is negative 9 times 10 to the negative second, followed by, um, excuse me, negative 3.1 times 10 to the negative third, and the largest number is negative 3 times 10 to the fourth, 10 to the negative fourth, excuse me. Um, so here, with negative numbers, we, we've ordered them out, we've converted them, thought out the absolute value. Uh, is, there, is there a faster way? And I think uh, there is, and you might see it. Look at these exponents, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. Which one's the largest? Well, negative 2 is, in fact, the largest number, then negative 3, and the smallest number is negative 4. And that brings us back to the, the ultra-simple rule of negative numbers in scientific notation. The smaller the exponent, the larger the number, and here it's true as well. Negative 4 is the smallest exponent, right? So it's the largest number. It's the least it's the excuse me, it is the most divisions of 10, so it's really close to 0. Right, negative 4 is smaller than negative 3, that's the middle. And the largest number here is negative 2. Negative 2 is bigger than negative 3, negative 4. It's the least divisions of 10, so it's really far from 0. So I said a lot of things here, and if I confused you, I apologize. But you've got to think about these complex examples in terms of absolute value and distance to make sense of them. And if you're not holding on to that, if that's like messing you up, just remember, with negative numbers, uh, they work the opposite of positive numbers. So the largest exponents will give you the smallest numbers. Of course, with positive numbers, everything makes sense. The largest exponents give you the largest numbers. With negative exponents, it's the reflection of that. So the larger the exponent, the smaller the number. Thanks.